I've got the floor in. Now I've got to undercoat it. Good stuff. It's going to make everything under here waterproof and beautiful at the same time. Time to build the walls, and uh, I have, you're going to build that out of plywood. The thing about uh, a template on this is uh, there was not any side or part of a side on this trailer that was not rotted out. So I've got a little trick to that that we'll get to a little bit later, but first things first, the uh, bottom, it's a 10-foot trailer, but really at the bottom it's only 9 feet 4 inches, and then it curves out on the front to give you 10 feet of living space. So what I did was I got five pieces of four by eight sanded one side plywood so that we could paint it whatever color the customer wants. And I doubled them up so the uh, inside, they're flipped over so that when I cut them, because they're exactly the same, when I cut them, the insides are ready to just separate and go out on to the trailer. Now I've got a four by eight, a four by eight. I took one four by eight for the fifth piece and I cut it down to a two by eight, so that gives us four feet, eight feet, 10 feet. So at the widest of the trailer, we've got every bit that we need. So we're really good there. I'm going to just make sure that these don't move because I'm gonna to have to take a jigsaw, cut out the shape once I get that little trick I'm gonna show you later, but I'm gonna kind of screw these down, make sure that they don't move. Okay, they gotta be 100% right where they go. And this first piece is ready just to kind of saw down or screw down here. So I put one there. Put another one just on this side of it after I pull this in. Make sure underneath is good. Now this won't come up. So I'm gonna do this the rest of the way down here. Then I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing. That's gonna hold it in place while I show you how I make my template, and then I'll cut it out. We didn't have the sides, so what I did was I took the driver's side, which doesn't have the door in it, and I laid the tin out. But you're saying, Rob, but that's not the right size. I know it's not, and I'll get there here in a second, but right now, I'm gonna trace this out, and that'll be my first pass to get the general idea and then I'll show you how we're gonna get down to just the right size for the interior. Not for the exterior, but for the interior. Okay, we got the tin off and we drew the line at the top of the tin, but that's not how big that the plywood has to be because there has to be room for the roof system. And this is kind of a little thing about how the roof system works. So let's say that it's laying on its side. This is one wall. There's gonna be another wall up here. So we're going to take that, it's going to be a three-quarter piece, it's going to be a one-by-four on, on the very top, and it's going to sit on top of the plywood. So this is cut down uh, quarter-inch plywood that is bent on the uh, angle, but we'll just pretend that it's on the angle. And you can see that this is the part right here that goes over that. So this lines up directly like this. Here, I'll just take it right here. It's like this fits perfect, just like this. So this rib would be right here on the roof. This is going to slip over the top. And so this would be the very top line. So I have to move it down this far. And then the roof is going to be a quarter inch underneath this. So I need this measurement, this measurement, and then a quarter inch that is the actual roof on top. Then I can take that and I can move it back. It's gonna be about one and a quarter. Depending on the, it doesn't, every one of these is gonna be, it's a touch different, but for the uh, material that we're using, it's gonna be one and a quarter, which we're gonna come down about right there. But I made this handy dandy little tool that goes from here to, to center line here is inch and a quarter. So all I have to do now 
is keep this line on here, keep this pencil down, and then just trace inside one and a quarter inch all the way equal with the 10, and then that's going to give me the exact template that I need for my walls. Just gonna keep one eye on my original line for the 10, and then one hand has to be on the pencil to keep it down there tight. Kind of ran into some of those staples that stuck on here. See if I can reach in here now. This way, try to keep it solid. Lots of those staple stuff. Uh, not that long. Here we go. That was not good. All right, you can see there's gonna be approximately an inch and a quarter, and there's gonna be some room with the metal. The metal's not gonna be exact, and it'll be have some high spots that we'll, we'll bend down and make fit. Plus, we've got all our butyl tape to use, and we got our J-rail that's gonna stick over, and that's gonna cover up any imperfections. We're gonna get as close as we can, but we also have ways to make sure that we're waterproof, make sure that it's looking good, and uh, I think this is gonna be real good. Now, I'm gonna cut this out on this inside line with the jigsaw, and once I finish that, I'm going to keep this together because I want to make a template out of it with uh, some uh, not real thick cardboard, that kind of flooring cardboard. And I'll make a template out of that and I won't have to go through this ever again and I'll be ready to go anytime I want to build a 10 foot pre-1974 Scotty. solid. There's wood underneath to screw into, so it's time to think about putting on the uh, sidewalls that we got cut out. One of the little tricks I use, I make this 90 degree square angle here, and I'll put it right up here to the edge and screw it down. And then when I go to put on the wall, it'll sit right up against that. So that one is set. Now I'll take this that we cut, put a couple of, get a couple of screws started in it, just so that we're good. We've got about two inches, two and a half inches to work with there, so, I think we're going to be good to start these. Using exterior grade screws, they'll last that much longer. They're coated and strong. All right, now, let's see, get it lined up good. That's about right. Get this. Check that front once more. There we go. Oh, just a touch. Just a touch. Oh, kind of make it even. Now. 
think we're pretty good there. We're just going to put one in here. I think we can put it down here towards the bottom. Now it's solid. That's going to do that. Now, I've got a piece to put here and a piece to put here. And that will finish out the eight feet length off of our two foot length here. And then that will be one side. Then we'll work on the other side. And as we go, we'll take and cut these one by fours down, set them across there, brace them up. And of course, we'll have the front window to go in. So we'll have a one by six for that. So that's what it's going to look like so far. Then we'll finish up. The important things to take away from uh, this episode is that make sure you get a good pressure washer on it. A lot of people uh, like to go all the way to sandblasting. Uh, that's not always necessary. Sometimes just hit it with a sander real good. Uh, when you put the floor down, go ahead and make sure that you use exterior screws or a stainless steel uh, carriage bolts to get those all knocked down in there. And then when you flip it up, like I did, um, I don't, I mean, don't, don't do that at home. I mean, I'm, I, I'm just kind of weird like that sometimes. So I just flipped it up because I could. And then I got it all sprayed down with that undercoating. You can get that at the big box uh, hardware store, undercoating. It's real easy to apply. It'll last forever. Now, uh, hey, don't forget to like and subscribe. We need, we need only just a couple more subscribers to get on kind of over that hump. So get on there. We need to get our 100 subscribers, and that would be super cool. But uh, anyways, you got to get that undercoating on there. Make sure you cover everything. Sometimes you'll miss a crack here and there, and that sometimes that's all it takes for the, the water to get in there. So hit that real good. Um, I made the um, template, and now I've saved it. I've got it rolled up in the corner. So anytime I do like a... I don't know, like a 63 to a 70, something like that. Anytime I do any in that, it, that that'll be the sides that'll be used for the 10 footer. So uh, a lot of things got done this uh, week. Uh, tune in about halfway through this week. We've got another part two coming up for you that I think you're really gonna like, and then we'll get back to our regular uh, episodes.